Vending machines are practically everywhere. And while you might walk on by them without much thought or even throw in a couple of bucks to get an ice cold soda or a bag of chips, chances are you probably haven't considered getting in on the vending machine game yourself. Maybe you assume that all of the good spots are already taken or that the initial investment cost might be too high for you to cover. But for those that are looking to start their own business or are simply wanting to pick up a lucrative side hustle, there is a whole lot to love about vending machines. If starting a vending machine side hustle sounds appealing to you, we're going to tell you everything you need to know in this video. We'll start with why you may want to consider starting the side hustle in the first place, particularly in 2022. Then we'll dive deeper and cover the types of vending machines to consider and how to obtain inventory to keep them stocked. We'll also take a look at the logistics of getting that vending machine, obtaining a license, and finding the best location to operate it. Finally, we'll break down the profits you could make by getting in on the vending machine side hustle. Let's take a look. Why start a vending machine business? In the United States alone, there are more than a million vending machines, generating over $23 billion in yearly revenue. Getting yourself a slice of this profit requires no special training or skills, and it can be done part-time, which means it's a great side hustle to consider. It's particularly profitable in 2022 because of the variety of vending machines that are available these days. While they used to purely offer sodas and snacks, vending machines have advanced to offer technology products, ice cream, coffee beverages, and even cars. You can now customize your vending machine offerings more than ever, improving your chances of standing out and reaching potential customers. Furthermore, the startup costs of this venture are incredibly low. Once you've either purchased or rented a vending machine, your overhead costs are going to be pretty inexpensive. You don't need to rent out costly retail space or an office to manage your business. You can easily work out of your garage, basement, or a spare room in your house or apartment. Besides having a vehicle to restock and service the machines on your route, you're not going to need any fancy equipment or machinery to get the side hustle up and going. Then, after you've got yourself a vending machine or two, you can expand your vending machine business as much as your time and financial situation permits. Once you've got your machines in place, the only duties that you'll need to keep up with are restocking and maintaining your machines as needed. If you can manage that, then the only other thing you'll have to do is collect your money. When it comes time, collecting your profits couldn't be simpler. You just collect cash directly from your machines, or you receive your payments from the card companies that handle your machine's card transactions. All of these points mean that operating a vending machine business is not only simple, but it also allows for a great deal of flexibility. Families can even handle the operational duties together. You can easily train your kids or partner to help you with purchasing your products, stocking your machines, making bank deposits, and keeping track of all of your accounting data. Besides having a little bit of startup capital or securing some financing to get your business going, really, the only other thing that you'll need is a moderate level of physical fitness. Servicing your machines is going to require you to do a reasonable amount of walking and maybe even heavy lifting, depending on the type of products your machines will be selling. But the point is, there are a few other side hustles out there that you can start with such low effort. Types of vending machines. Before jumping in, it's important to understand the types of vending machines out there and what you can do with them. The first to be familiar with is the bulk vending machine, which commonly attracts children for cheap toys, stickers, gumballs, or other loose candy. These sorts of machines are unlikely to bring in the big bucks overnight, considering how inexpensive the products are for the consumer, but they generally require very little maintenance and operate without electricity. This means they will be an incredibly low cost vending machine for you to start with, but you'll need to find a great location for them to make any meaningful income. Next are custom vending machines, which allow consumers to purchase non-food items. Think iPhones, laundry products, beauty products, headphones, and sunglasses. In recent years, there have even been vending machines that sell things like guitar strings, Legos, books, and clothing items. This is when knowing your market is critical to your success, because you'll have to adapt your product offerings to the local market. If you live in a city, you might have more success selling pricier items than if you choose to set up shop somewhere more rural. As long as you can identify your niche, however, the sky is virtually the limit when it comes to what kind of products you can sell in your machines. It is worth noting though that if you're interested in going this route, vending machines for non-food items can be a bit pricier, so it's best to factor that in when drawing up your business model. Next are food and beverage vending machines, which are the ones you're probably most used to seeing. These machines dispense items such as soda, water, coffee, and tea, as well as snack foods like chips, pretzels, and candy bars. In some markets, healthier snacks like nuts and dried fruit are also in demand. So if you plan on placing your machines in wealthier areas, you might consider offering these and more gourmet items. In LA, for example, machines have been spotted that offer items like caviar, gourmet cheeses, and escargot. There are also specialized food and beverage machines that offer products like ice cream, milkshakes, or even full meals. The more specialized your machine, the pricier your startup costs will be. So again, you'll really need to understand your market to get the most out of your investment. Securing your inventory. You'll need to stock your machine with products that you can purchase at a discounted rate, which ensures you can resell to customers at a price they're willing to pay while still securing profit for yourself. If your products are too expensive, they're not going to sell easily. 
The best way to save on overhead and increase your profit margins is by purchasing products in bulk directly from the manufacturer. It's also important to offer your customers recognizable brands that they're already familiar with. A vending machine really isn't the place to try and sell items that no one has ever heard of before. If you're selling food and beverages, try to get brand name products to draw in as many people as possible. As you stock and restock your inventory over a few months, you'll begin to see which products sell and which products don't. Over time, you can tweak your inventory so that your products move as quickly as possible. Furthermore, as you become a more frequent buyer or expand to more vending machines, you may be able to get discounts from your supplier to further boost your profit margins. Purchasing a vending machine. If you're not planning on purchasing a pre-existing franchise or vending machine business, which we'll discuss in just a moment, you'll need to acquire one or more machines to get yourself started. If you're building your business from scratch, it's usually best to start small. Used machines are a great way to get started. You can check platforms like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or usedvending.com to find affordable pre-owned vending machines. A quick Google search will also put you in touch with local vending machine dealers in your area. Basic food and beverage vending machines can be purchased in the range of $1,000 to $3,000 when you buy used or refurbished. Once you've had success with your used machines, you can always work your way up to flashier new machines. But it's good to keep in mind that some newer machines can be quite expensive, especially if they have features like robotic arms, mechanical parts, or touchscreens. If you're selling non-traditional vending items like electronics, expect to shell out a bit more for the machines that are best suited for those kinds of products. New and specialized vending machines can range from $5,000 to $10,000 or more, depending on how unique the machine is. If you do want to go for one of those nicer machines, there are several financing options for starting your vending business. You can either apply for an unsecured or secured loan, a short-term business loan if you have decent credit, an SBA loan, or tap into your 401k by looking into a specialized IRS-approved 401k rollover program. Granted, if you already have a bit of savings, it's usually best to fully own your machines without borrowing money from someone else if you can afford it. As we touched on earlier, you can also look into purchasing or buying into a pre-existing vending machine franchise. This option will give you instant cash flow, but it's important to determine why the previous owner is selling their business. If you choose to go this route, research extensively the area that the machines are located in. You'll also want to inspect the machines in person, examine existing contracts, and get an idea of just how much business they already receive. After all, you wouldn't want to buy a dying business from somebody just to get an easy in into the vending machine business. Obtaining a vending machine license. Vending machines normally require their owners to have a license to operate in their municipality or state. Before starting a vending machine business, it's crucial that you read up on and understand these requirements. If you're required to collect and pay sales tax in your area, you'll also need to acquire a seller's permit. And if you're selling perishable items, like food, you might also have to obtain a health and foods permit. The price of these licenses and permits can vary greatly depending on your location, so you may want to estimate at least a few hundred dollars here to collect everything that you need. If you want this business to work long term, complying with all of the legal requirements is an absolute must. You can also get a good start here by consulting with other vending machine businesses or even a business lawyer to make sure you're checking all the right boxes. Finding the right location. The last thing to do is determine the location for your vending machine. The best areas will have a lot of foot traffic, such as malls, residential complexes, and entertainment districts. Office buildings, colleges, and manufacturing plants are also ideal locations to set up shop. Places that have few other food options are also great if you're selling snacks and beverages. Great locations that fit this description include parks, gas stations without convenience stores, rest stops, hotels and motels, and even jails. If these places don't have a vending machine yet, you'll be even better off to capitalize on the profit potential. If a place does already have a vending machine installed, don't get discouraged. A little competition can actually be great for business, especially if you're filling a niche that's not currently covered. By placing a well-stocked, attractive machine next to an older, dated machine with an entirely different product line, you can stand out against the competition and actually attract more business to your machine. It's also a good idea that when scouting for locations, to take a peek at crime statistics to avoid areas with a lot of theft and vandalism. Damage to your machines can quickly eat away at your profits. The best locations are highly visible, regularly patrolled, and in view of security cameras. Potential profits. So once you do all this, what kind of profit can you expect? Well, given the low startup costs and low maintenance costs, vending machines can be pretty profitable. The average machine earns its owner about $35 a week, but machines that are well stocked and placed in high traffic locations can earn substantially more than that. Some machines make as much as four to $500 a month, and if you're able to secure fancy machines and sell more profitable products, that number can balloon up into the thousands. And keep in mind, this is for just setting up a machine and restocking it occasionally. If you're able to scale this to multiple machines, you can be earning substantial income from doing little to no work. If you want to automate it even further, you can hire someone else to check on your machines for you, so you can turn this into a completely passive income source. Of course, if you're not ready to spend a few thousand dollars on a machine and worry about the licensing required, this may not be the best side hustle for you. But don't worry, there's tons of other side hustles out there from freelance writing to garage sale arbitrage 
that can make you full-time income with no startup costs. Check out some of our recent videos here or by visiting our channel page. Leave us a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.